welcome to this introductory session on connective tissue. Over the next several sessions, we'll be looking at a variety of pathological and orthopedic conditions in which we'll be discussing disease processes and healing in bone, cartilage, tendon, and ligament. In order to better appreciate these concepts, it helps to take a few minutes to quickly review the histological concepts related to connective tissues in general. The purpose of this session is to identify the different categories of connective tissue and describe how the composition of the extracellular environment, which distinguishes one type of connective tissue from another, contributes to their biomechanical properties. Connective tissue is one of the four main tissue types of the body, and of the four is by far the most abundant. A number of varied body tissues fall into this category, including skin, bone, cartilage, fat, and even blood. Despite these differences, the fundamental structure for most of these tissues is essentially the same. Connective tissues are made up of fibroblasts embedded in an extracellular matrix of their own creation, made up of protein and ground substance. It's the precise nature of these secretions, the type and abundance of each substance, that defines the connective tissue type and dictates the properties. The main type of protein secretions are fibrous proteins, which provide the tissue with tensile strength. Collagen fibers are composed of one or more of the different collagen protein isoforms and provide the tissue with significant tensile strength, but at the same time with a certain degree of flexibility within the protein fiber. Elastic fibers formed from elastin protein add a greater degree of flexibility to the matrix when present. The cross-linking that occurs between the glycoproteins of reticular fibers creates a latticework within the matrix that provides tensile strength in a three-dimensional plane. Connective tissue can be subdivided into connective tissue proper, supporting connective tissues, which will be discussed in a later session, and fluid connective tissue, which constitutes blood. Connective tissue proper can be further divided into loose and dense connective tissues. Loose connective tissues are characterized by closely packed cells with minimal amounts of surrounding matrix, as the name implies. With dense connective tissue, there is an abundance of extracellular matrix with the cells spread much further apart. The fascia found deep to the skin and separating muscles from one another is referred to as loose areolar connective tissue. It is composed of loosely packed fibroblasts embedded in a semi-fluid matrix in which high concentrations of glycoproteins draw water molecules into the extracellular environment. Protein density is low, but all three major types of protein are present to give support to the matrix. There also tends to be a high concentration of white blood cells which move through the semi-fluid matrix and mount an immune response against infections that may result from penetrating wounds. Adipose tissue, more commonly referred to as fat tissue, is found in the same regions of the body as areolar tissue. It is formed from tightly packed clusters of adipocytes separated by a very thin matrix which contains proteins to bind the cells together. Adipose tissue stores triglycerides as a reserve pool of energy and also serves a role in protecting the organs from blunt force trauma and thermal insulation. As you would expect from the name, Loose reticular connective tissue contains a large proportion of reticular fibers, which gives it an increased degree of rigidity compared to other loose connective tissues. This can be found in certain organs, such as the spleen and liver. We will be spending a fair amount of time discussing tendons and ligaments, which are both types of dense regular connective tissue. This type of connective tissue has a high concentration of collagen fibers running in parallel alignment. This provides the tissue with a large amount of tensile strength in the plane running parallel to the long axis of the collagen fibers. This is similar to what we see with a piece of rope. Rope will display great tensile strength along its long axis, but if you were to apply a pulling force perpendicular to the axis, the rope would fray. The same could potentially happen with tendon and ligament, but these forces are not usually experienced in a biological system. In tissues which encounter forces along multiple planes, such as the heart valves and periosteal lining of bones, we typically see dense, irregular connective tissue. Once again, we see a high concentration of collagen fibers, but in this case, fiber bundles run at oblique angles to one another. There is therefore less tensile strength than is seen in dense, regular connective tissue 
along the designated axis, but the tissue is able to withstand forces projecting in multiple directions. The final type of dense connective tissue is elastic. This can be found in the lining of larger arteries and respiratory tubules, and also makes up a large portion of the ligamentum flavum of the spine. Elastic connective tissue contains high concentrations of elastin protein. It therefore allows greater distension than is seen with dense regular and irregular connective tissue, and the elastic fibers allow recoil when the tissue does become stretched. That concludes this brief review of the different types of connective tissue. In the next session, we will start looking at specific types of connective tissue with importance in orthopedics, beginning with tendons and ligaments.